Hello and welcome to yet another episode of London Eye. My guest today on the show is Robert Buckland, Global Equity Strategist at Citigroup. Robert, thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah, I was reading your previous note and you say that you are still quite optimistic about 2018, but we've seen quite a bit of volatility this yeah. year, not unexpectedly. Now almost halfway through the year, how do you see the second half? Do you see the second half as the period where we eke out some gains or do you see more volatility? Well, I think the main message I've been conveying to my clients around the world as I've been seeing them over the last few months is that last year was a low volatility bull market and I think we've transformed this year into a high volatility bull market. So we're still in a bull market. We won't transition all the way into a high volatility bear market, but you're absolutely right. It's getting choppier. Mm. What it means is that your viewers, my clients, they have to be a bit braver, right? The dips will be bigger. There will be lots of reasons that people will tell you those dips will turn into a bear market, but we don't think it, we think it's too early to make that call. So we would be buying the bigger dips as but they occur. Do you have those set of indicators that many people have where which those boxes that ticked you say now we're getting closer to a bear market. Yeah. How is that list looking? Yeah, we, we have this thing that's incredibly popular amongst clients, 18 things that fall into place at the top of a bull market, i.e. don't buy the dips. And we're still only getting, getting up to about three out of 18 of those boxes turning red. How so, many usually do turn red? Yeah, you, you've got to get the number up to 8, 9, 10, 11, something like that before you start to get more worried. That's where we got to in 2000 mm. and you shouldn't have bought the dips post 2000. That's where we got to in 2007. You shouldn't have bought the dips in 2007, 8, of course. Mm. We're just, I think I've said to you this before, you know, it's like a miserable bull market, this one. <laughs> and it's when we're all really happy that it gets dangerous. Still, it's a pretty miserable bull market, which reassures me that it's not finished. Do you hear that a lot from your clients? A lot of skepticism still? Yeah, sure. Um, and, and proper bull markets suck everyone in. Yeah. They suck you in, they suck me in, they suck investors in, they suck CEOs in, they suck everyone in. Mm. I don't feel like everyone sucked into this one. Mm. Okay. So, What's, what's your prognosis? That we'll grind out some gains or the second half turns out to be an actually a very good second half of the year in terms of performance? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think we'll get a decent year this year. We're forecasting gains, if you bought on the 1st of January, of 7, 8, 9% now. Most indices, are, you know, they've rallied a bit recently, so they're probably flat to up a little bit for mm -hmm. the year now. So that would imply maybe 6, 7% returns over the rest of the year, but it'll be a choppy run. There'll be some dips. If you buy into the dip, you could maybe turn that into a 10% return. Mm. But we've had 8 to 10% kind of dips. Do you see those kind of, which are big dips to buy, mm. some, that kind of volatility even in store for the second half of the year? Yeah, I think everyone's got to get used to higher volatility. Last year was an aberration incredibly low level of the VIX, for instance, in the US, very low levels of volatility. I think the biggest setback we had for two years was maybe two, three, four percent in the global stock market. Sure, we, sh we saw a 10% dip, but I think the 10% dips are more normal and that last year was weird and that's done. Mm. What causes volatility this year? We, we know the usual culprits, but if you had to make a list of two or three things which still can cause or inject a lot of volatility, what would those be? I think, I often get people asking me this, Rob, do you think there are more frightening events happening at the moment, Trump, whatever, political instability that are triggering this volatility. I think volatility is much more a reflection of the market environment. There will always be adverse events, but it's the ability of adverse events to really move share prices that has changed this year compared to last year. Mm -hmm. And what that's telling me is the stock market is more jittery, it's more vulnerable to adverse events. There were adverse events last year, we just didn't do anything, you know, we dipped two, three percent on them, not seven, eight, nine. So I think this market with, with rates tightening, with policy around the world generally tightening, are more vulnerable to events and that's why you get bigger dips now than you got last year. So it's more a market phenomenon than it is about events. But what would have be the nature or, or the reasons behind this kind of skittishness that you're alluding to? Yeah, uh, look, we've never seen QE before. Uh, we're talking about central banks owning 30, 40, 50 percent of respective countries' bond markets. I mean, just, just, let's just take a step back and think about that. The central bank owning 30, 40, 50 percent of the national debt of their respective countries. We've never seen anything like that we're now starting to see that unwound a bit. And I think that's the major thing that's driving skittishness, is that policy has been the loosest we have ever seen, ever, over the last two, three, four, five years because of QE. 
policy is now, now starting to be tightened, liquidity is being withdrawn, that's why markets are skittish and more responsive to whatever the events happen to be at any one time. But do you still see it as a unknown devil? I mean, everybody knows about it, talks mm. about it. In that sense, do you think the potential of the market to unwind completely is low or do you think it's still such a big event that if central banks are not able to pull it off, it might cause a huge amount of damage to markets. I, th I think it's it's very challenging. I think you'll you'll get a bit of three steps forward, two steps back. So the three steps forward will be the central banks attempting to tighten policy. Mm -hmm. And remember, the way it works with QE is they don't sell. Some people think QE is about them selling those bond positions down. It's not about that. They just stop buying. Mm -hmm. They just stop buying. That's what QE is all about. And I think that as they stop buying. And my clients, remember the private sector capital markets, have to sort of step up and start pricing risk. They'll start pricing risk a little bit more expensive, if you want to think of it that way around, than central banks were doing. So what central banks were intentionally doing is kind of compressing the price of risk. They were buyers of risk in the markets that we would otherwise have to price in. Mm. As they step away, we're going to have to start pricing that in. And of course, that makes us jumpy, right? Because it's mm. it, it, you know we're the ones who are going to have to do that job. What is the US bond deal telling you now? Because that's become the focus of a lot of attention. Yeah. Do you, and some even go to the extent of saying that the next big risk for global markets is actually the US corporate bond market. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I mean, it's a big number. US Treasuries have just hit 3%. Yeah. I mean, I think we should take a little bit of a step back and think, well, if you told me that, that we'd all be worrying about US Treasuries hitting 3% 10 years ago when they were 7% or whatever. <laughs> so let's take, I mean, 3% is a very, very low number. Let's not lose that perspective. But you're right. I mean, if you're a bond trader and you bought at 1.6, which is the low they got to, mm. and they're now at 3, you've lost a lot of money. Um, so I think in the bond trading world, yields going up to 3 is a big deal. Of course it is. But I think in the real world, 3% interest rates are still pretty low. So we think that in the work that we've done, we think that equity markets can absorb bond yields up to about 3.5, 3.7 before they really start to come under pressure. So I think we're able to accommodate that. And it will cause disruption, bond yields rising as we're seeing at the moment. That's one of the factors behind the extra volatility that we're seeing. But I don't see it killing this, where are we, nine-year bull market. I don't see it doing that. So I think it's tricky for us to digest, but we will digest it. Okay. What about the counter view that mm. while everybody's stressing about bond deals going up and inflation coming back harder than people expect, actually it's growth which disappoints and we get a growth scare which kills this bull market, not inflation. Mm. What probability would you assign to that? I think that's a really good point. I would be much more worried if bond yields in the US went to two and a half because we were worried about growth and we suddenly thought, wow, they're not going to tighten policy, they're going to keep policy really loose, mm. than if bond yields went to 3.4. So I, I think that's a very good point. Equities in the end are more of an option on growth than they are on interest rates. Thank you.